With all the audio interfaces on the market today and all these companies trying to lure you in into getting their product, how do you figure out which one is for you? Well, that really depends on what you're using it for. Certain ones have too much tech and too much stuff going on to really justify spending the extra cash. And some of them don't have enough for you to survive in the content that you're trying to create. But in this video, this product has definitely shown me that spending a little extra definitely helps. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're going to be talking about the GoXLR Mini. And figuring out if it's for you, if it's too much, if it's too little, if it's really the product for your content that you're going to create. So as you saw in that montage, this thing has a lot of features. It has a lot of cool colors and lights and things like that going on, but Behind the lights and the faders and the really cool design, there is actually a really hefty audio interface in there. So let's talk about the build and show you what it has physically going on. Now first off, the small design is the reason why I decided to get this one as opposed to the full Go XLR. There are more things that go into it, but the major thing was the size. The next thing is the faders they don't need to be motorized. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's one extra cost that really you don't need. It doesn't take too much effort to push a fader up and down. And I've been in and out of studios for the better part of the last 10 years. Faders are not that heavy, so you'll be fine. The next thing is the voice changing and the sampling. You don't need it. You really don't need it. It's a quirky little thing that's nice to have occasionally, but you really don't need it. Another big reason why I chose the smaller one over the big one is because the software is essentially the same. I got this audio interface for streaming. Now, of course, I could use it for other things, but I used it for streaming. And it does much more than just having my microphone heard on my computer. It actually routes everything. And their routing system and their software is good on the big one and on the mini. So that's really the reason why I chose it. Below the faders, we have a bunch of mute buttons, which you can make any color you want and design it however you want. The faders also can be designed in any way. You could have a monitoring system where you see the levels going up and down, or you could just have it as a straight color. That's how you like it. Below the mute buttons, we have a bleep button. And on the other side, you have a cough button, which is kind of like a bleep button without the comedy just for lack of better terms now to finish up what you can see up front we have a microphone 3.5 millimeter jack on the front which if you're getting this and you plan on using that i don't suggest getting this because you're not going to take full advantage of the go xlr mini and then you have your headphone jack where you can route whatever signal you want to your headphones now finally on the back we have the io for routing things and routing your audio signals physically so first up we have the optical audio feed so this is for like consoles and uh things that you can route with an optical cable very nice i'm a console gamer myself and i really love having that audio signal separate not coming out of the game capture card it's just a little easier to monitor at least for me 
maybe for someone else it could be a little bit different but for me i like having that separate feed and having more manipulation of it next we have a line in and a line out so if you have any other audio signals you want to use if you have a p2 pc setup you could use that as well uh for me i use it for my laptop i go into the line in and then i route the other way out to my studio monitors but for the most part i could do that in the routing system but i find it a little easier to do it this way and of course last but certainly not least actually this is the major part about the whole thing you have your xlr port which it's an awesome interface and an awesome xlr port with the preamp being really well designed and it can support a sure sm7b without any cloud lifter i still suggest you get like a cloud lifter or a fet head if you have some microphones that need the extra bit of gain like the sure sm7b very popular among streamers and people that make content but you don't need it necessarily now that we're done with the build and everything that goes into it physically let's get into the techie talk and this is going to be a little bit of a different style of techie talk because i'm used to doing a techie talk of microphones and things that go into that but an audio interface very has very similar specs so here's a graphic of all the specs and i'm going to talk about some of the major ones so the first thing that stands out is 70 decibels of gain and that's huge like i said it could support a sure sm7b and if a interface can support a sure sm7b without any help before the preamp it's really good and very well made Right now, I'm using a Octava MK012 pencil condenser microphone going into the Go XLR Mini and recording into Studio One by Presonus. When you're using, obviously, a condenser microphone or if you use a cloud lifter on a dynamic microphone or a fat head, whatever it is, some DB booster, they require phantom power as well. So just keep that in mind. It offers the 48 volts, so you don't have to worry about not having it. Next thing that stood out for me is the USB 2. Now, B usually goes to a 2. I haven't seen a B that goes to a 3.0. But I also saw in the manual that if you put it into a USB 3, uh, even though it's a lower level, it could have some dropouts with your audio. So if you're going to be using this, go to a USB 2 port. Usually it's a white uh, color if you look into there and USB 3 is blue usually, but be very careful and make sure you know your specs because the colors could change. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick setup. So just go through all the things that you have to do to set this thing up and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into the software and show you how things work. And throughout this, I will be switching up the microphones to show you how it performs with different types of microphones. All right, so we have the Shure SM7B here set up recording into Studio One through the Go XLR Mini. And what I noticed is you need about 65-ish decibels of gain. Okay, so you can see here we have the Go XLR software right now that you just download from their website. Easy, no problems. Everybody knows how to download it. Then you go to mic setup where you decide on which type of microphone you're going to have. Now, I mentioned this before, not all situations are the same. So if it's a dynamic microphone with no extra stuff attached to it, you're going to go dynamic. And you could hear it. You could see the levels going up and down. And I'm about 65 right here. We're actually we're at 65 decibels. And you're noticing that it's right in the good section and a little bit on the loud, but not too bad. Uh, this is where I like to keep it. You could go a little bit lower, a little bit higher. So if you manipulate this, so 60 with the Shure SM7B, you notice that it's right in the good. But as when I'm talking in a regular voice, it's right in smack in the middle of the good. I like to have a little bit more of a healthy level. So I like 65, it's, it's pretty good. And if I get a little bit louder, it doesn't go too crazy and probably doesn't clip loud right here see it clipped right there so maybe go back a little bit or you could throw a limiter on depending on where you're going with this if you were using a condenser microphone or if you threw on a fet head 
with the Shure SM7B, you will need phantom power. Condenser phantom power is 48 volts. Then there's a 3.5 millimeter option, which if you're getting a Go XLR, don't, uh, don't use a 3.5. You're not using the full potential of the Go XLR. So after you decide on which microphone you want, you have three options here. You have your noise gate, you have equalizer, and you have your compressor. A quick and easy way to know how these things work, you can expand each one of these to more fine detail of what you want. But if you're a person who doesn't know how to use these specific uh, effects, uh, I would keep it like this and keep it simple, which in this video, I'll just keep it simple. Like I said, if there's anything you want me to cover uh, in depth, maybe I'll do a video how to do equalizing, gate, and compression depending on different types of microphones and different types of areas. But you got to let me know down in the comments. I have it on the list, but if you got more people, let me know that they want it. I'll do it sooner rather than later. So at 20, this is what you're going to have. This is the amount. This is like a rough estimate of the whole, like everything, like all the uh, modifications you can make. They sum it up in this right here. So let's say you have something coming up and it's in the, let's look at this below not hitting 45 let's say it's 45 because this, this is how I this makes sense to me so your threshold is the amount of noise that's going to be cut off so if anything below 45 is happening it's going to be cut off but they, when the gate opens everything comes through so everything below 45 and that it's just when you're not talking anything that happens above 45 that is heard the gate opens and everything comes through, just so you know. Same thing for EQ. You have your bass, your mids, and your highs. Uh, usually you cut your mids a little bit, maybe a little extra bass, and maybe sometimes a little treble. Always depends on your source that you're using. And of course, compressor, it's very simple. The higher it goes, the closer you bring the highs and the lows together. So a compressor basically means when you increase it, your lows and your highs are compressed like a sandwich and they come closer together so the more compression you have you notice that the compression brings up the lows a little higher and brings the highs a little lower so that's how it works so now that we have the mic set up you can now go into all the other things basically you have in the mixer you have your four channels that are here and those are the four channels that are going to be on the faders and what you can manipulate with your hands immediately. If there's other submixes in here that you could route and the routing is a bit involved because you have to go into your audio settings of your computer, which I'm not getting into in this. That will be a separate video. I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible. So. If you look in this routing section, your broadcast to stream means what's going out to your stream. For me, I use two separate files, two separate signals, meaning one is going to be just the mic, my broadcast signal, and the other one is the rest, music and my console. Like we talked about before, the optical is the console. And the music is obviously the music. In my audio settings, I have music, meaning Spotify, set up to go to the music section. So anytime I use the fader for the music tab or music fader, that's what's going to be manipulated. Spotify, the specific app. And you could assign this in the audio settings. It's very simple, but it can be a little overwhelming if you don't know what you're doing. So back to the mixer. Obviously, mic is one thing. Chat, music. Chat, I set up as my console. So if you look at channel two, it says console. I don't use chat. I really don't do multiplayer games and stuff like that. So I just set up my console, meaning my gameplay uh, as that one. It's fine, not a big deal. And then you have your mute options, mute whatever, which way you want. If you want to mute to the stream, mute to voice chat, whatever it is. And you could do this for all of them. Then your lighting, there's lighting all around. You could light every single fader 
and your style, the cough and bleep, and the global one is basically your, uh, the Go XLR X is what you're lighting here, and the accents as well. Um, it's very simple. You just play around with it, and you go to each channel and manipulate it however you want. Right now, I have like a green and uh, white kind of frosty kind of look, and then blue and white for some of them as well. And that is the Go XLR Mini, a very cool little device that we have here. But the thing is, you need to make sure that you're getting it for the right reason. Make sure that it complements your content. And don't waste money on something that you're not going to utilize. If you're not a streamer, you're probably not going to need this. If you're a content creator, you might need this. But there are plenty other options out there that might lend well to your content. The Wave XLR is another great option with more features on the way with their software. And to be honest, when that software starts upgrading, the Go XLR might be obsolete. But for people who like the faders, people who like the buttons at their disposal, maybe this here is a matter of personal preference. But the Wave XLR is certainly cheaper and with more features, as I said, on the way. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos like this, more Go XLR stuff, more mic reviews. Speaking of mic reviews, we have the AT2040. I'm going to be doing a solo video on this and a bunch of comparisons coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. Probably going to have them out next week. Uh, cause there's a lot of stuff that I'm recording right now and, uh, I want to bang out all the recording first and then start editing and probably next week they'll start rolling out. So this week, maybe a couple of short videos, including this one, we'll have this video out as well, obviously, cause you're watching this this week, or if you're watching this in the future, this makes no sense to you. But, uh, yeah, if it's in the future and after the week of August 16th, then they're probably out already and go check those out. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comments section. All I ask is that you be nice down there. And if you want to ask me things more directly or just hang out, I stream on the weekends and sometimes during the week, depending on what's going on. If you put the notification bell on, you'll know exactly when I go live. And if you're around, want to stop by for five minutes, just say hi. That'd be cool. And that's all I got for you today. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, compared uh, while streaming compared to others. Oh no! Evie, whoa. Evie, why? Evie, why? Evie, why?